Hey everyone, Marshdegate here bringing you a brand new game review. Today we're going to be reviewing Rise of the Tomb Raider. So back in 2013, Crystal Dynamics dropped one hell of a reboot for the Tomb Raider series simply called Tomb Raider. It was this awesome action adventure game that did a really great job of immersing you into this more realistic and gritty world as you watched and played as an untested Lara Croft who gets thrown into this nightmare of a situation and is forced to use all her skills and wit to survive and save her friends. On top of that, the game had a bounty of side content that gave it a pretty decent replay value. So, it immediately became one of my favorite games in the series, and when it was announced that they were actually working on a sequel for it, it was pretty safe to say that I was excited. Wasn't too excited about the fact that we had to wait a year after the Xbox One release in order to get a PS4 release, but whatever. We got, the D we got all the DLC content for it, plus some, so I guess it makes up for it in the end. Either way around, let's get into the review. Before we jump into the main part of the review, I do have to share one complaint I have about this game that won't really affect the score as much, seeing as it has to do more with my personal preference than anything. But it was still something that pulled me out of the immersion of the game at times. I am not really a fan of what they did to Lara and Jonah's look and rise. It does look incredible, especially with the motion capturing going on, but it also makes her and Jonah look different in this game than they did in Tomb Raider. Laura's face is slightly smaller and more rounded, her eyes are a bit farther from her nose, and her nose is just a little bit bigger. She looks more cute in this one, whereas in the Tomb Raider game she looked more bold and beautiful. But like I said, this is more of a personal preference, so if you completely disagree with me on that, that's perfectly fine, that doesn't change anything. Rise of the Tomb Raider's gameplay mechanics are pretty much the same as they were in the reboot, with a couple of differences here and there. The combat system and platforming sections are pretty much the same, only smoother this time around, but I do have to say that there are still issues and bugs at times, especially with the platforming. That can lead to some unjust deaths. Twice I fell through the world and died, and once, well, <laughs> this happened. So yes, there are instances where Lara will make a jump, grab the ledge, glitch through the wall, and in a completely casual and totally unsexual way, start rhythmically bouncing back and forth on it like it was the best day of her life. But <laughs> some might say that she was really rocking it at that point. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I had to. But like I said before, this doesn't happen too often, and when it does, it's nothing too frustrating. Like... You might jump at a weird angle, and the game might not recognize the ledge that you were jumping for, so you might fall to your death because of that. But chances are more than likely when you go back and do it the second time, you will make that jump, because the game does a pretty good job at recognizing the ledges and stuff like that. But it was something that I did want to bring up to you guys. One of the major changes in this game comes from resource gathering and hunting. They kind of tackled this concept a little bit back in the reboot, but it never really went anywhere past the first part of the game and it never really seemed to serve any other purpose other than XP grinding. In this game however it plays a much bigger role as you need to gather these various resources to craft important items like weapon upgrades, better gear, arrows, ammunition, bombs, and health packs. The perk system makes a return and it works pretty much the same way as it did before with a couple of new perks. I do have to say though I was kind of disappointed at the perks. While there are some interesting ones, there are a lot of them that just don't make any sense, like skills that you learned in the first game that should have carried over to you into the sequel. The same thing applies with gear. Apparently, Lara forgot how to, to tie a rope around an arrow within a year. She also apparently forgot how to dodge counter, salvage arrows from dead animals, and use stealth to take out enemies. Come on, Crystal, what the heck? On top of that, I found some of the perks to just be either boring or completely underwhelming, like the multi-arrow firing perks. Those were just pointless, like there was no reason we needed three perks for that when we have far more powerful alternatives like the upgraded poison arrow or the upgraded grenade arrow that basically turns your bow into Galahorn's ancestor, the Galabo. Seriously, when you fire this damn thing, it drops a cluster of small grenades around the impact zone for more damage. You put tracking on those bad boys and Bungie might start looking at you for copyright infringement. Okay, Crystal Dynamics, hear me out, hear me out. I have a crazy idea, and it, it might work, it might work. What if instead of those useless perks, we instead trade them for something that lets us, I don't know, dual wield pistols? You know, maybe, you know, having two pistols instead of one? Because that's never been done in a Tomb Raider game before. 
And it's totally not a stable point of the series. Oh, wait. It is, actually. Hmm. It was even in the last one. Hmm. I kind of... With all jokes aside, I, I know why they don't really want to go the dual-wielding pistols route this time around. They want to showcase a new Lara. Um, but at the same time, you know, that would have been a fun perk. That would have been something that was interesting. That could have changed up the gameplay a bit. And that's what I was kind of looking for with these perks. It's something that changed up the gameplay. Not gave us, you know, the ability to fire three arrows at the same time. When we had things like the poison arrow, which could do that with one shot. Speaking of which, speaking of which... These perks might have actually worked a lot better if the poison arrow wasn't so damn overpowered. Not only are these things silent one-shots, but they also have an area of effect, which means you don't even need to hit the enemy directly in order to take them out. You just need to make sure that he's in the effect range. Plus, if there are multiple enemies in the effect range, they all get taken out as well. And this doesn't just work on grunts. This works on almost every human enemy in the game, whether they have armor or not. This includes the Deathless ones as well. Honestly, I feel like the Poison Arrow should have only had a stun feature to them instead of an actual kill feature. That way, it would have been a lot more balanced, and it would have given you a tool to gain some breathing room in those really tough firefights. But alas, there's there are just these overpowered arrows that can just decimate groups of enemies with one shot. Now, I know I've been critical of the game this far in, and for good reason... I, I do want to make it clear that I do en did enjoy my time with this game. While I do feel that there are things that could have been done better, I do feel that there is also things that were done perfectly. One of the best aspects of the original Tomb Raider reboot was the amount of side content that was available. There was a shit ton of collectible documents and artifacts that gave you decent backstory into the location, the characters, the lore, the setting, stuff like that. It also had little optional challenges for some areas where you would go and hunt down certain items and usually destroy them. And it also had tombs where you would have to figure out some interesting little puzzle in order to enter the tomb and raid it and get its reward. Well, I'm very happy to say that all of these and then some make their way into Rise of the Tomb Raider. The documents and artifacts once again do a great job of giving the backstory on various characters and places. There are now multiple challenges per area, plus there are now NPCs who will give you side missions that unlock various gun attachments and outfits. This time around, when you raid one of the 500-year-old tombs, it isn't going to give you some advanced military gun part like it did in the reboot. It, the developers have instead gone for a more grounded approach, and now it gives you manuscripts that actually teach Alara new abilities. Some new things they have also included are crypts, which are basically smaller versions of tombs that usually don't have puzzles in them, and murals that actually help you find old coins, which can be used as currency to buy new equipment. If that's not enough, well, let me tell you, there is a shit ton of other things that you can do if you have the 20-year celebration edition or all the DLC. One of my favorite missions in the game is actually the Baba Yaga Temple of the Witch DLC. I had a blast playing through it, it had fun puzzles, it had an enjoyable and interesting story, and the boss battle was great. Endurance Mode was another great DLC. Your task is pretty straightforward and collect as many artif artifacts as possible before signaling for evac. The catch is that now you have no weapons except a bow and you have to worry about uh, food and warmth as shown in meters, which if you're watching the gameplay right now, you can actually see them in the top left hand corner. Those are the meters. Um, the days go by and as the days go on and you collect more artifacts, it starts getting harder and harder. You deal with you know storms coming in. You face anything from regular grunts of Trinity to the deathless ones to even nature itself. Yeah, it's safe to say that Endurance is pretty damn in intense at times, but I had a blast playing it. Plus, it's also co-op, which it's just the icing on the cake. I mean, playing this mode with a friend is an absolute blast, and it's something I definitely recommend to anybody who enjoys these survival modes or just wants a new perspective on the game. Because while it still uses the same elements and uh, gameplay as the main story, it incorporates these different elements that give it a very unique feel to it. All right, let's talk about the story and right off the bat, this is where I feel some of the weaker points of the game are. The story for the most part is strong and the characters are all unique. I did enjoy the fact that Crystal Dynamics actually took the time and not only gave the friendly characters 
depth, but also the villain characters as well. It's kind of like the the previous game where the villain character was somebody that you didn't like at all, but you also had an understanding of why he was doing what he was doing. But going through this game made me feel like something was missing. The story wasn't nearly as intense or emotional as the previous game, and that grasp of reality that the previous game had wasn't really in this one. I mean, there were definite moments in Tomb Raider that were genuinely heart-pounding and heartbreaking. While this game did have some of its moments, for the most part, it was pretty barren. Like, here's an example. The final act of the game mirrors the previous game's final act in some ways. One of those is a gauntlet run. And at the end of the gauntlet run, instead of having this epic battle with this beast, you are instead tasked to hide around a corner, craft a grenade, and throw it at a the boss, which is nothing special. It's another human boss. Um, to me, that that was just lazy. I I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just me, but. I don't feel like an epic boss battle should be should end up with you spamming triangle button when you're hiding behind a corner. That that's just not a good boss battle to me. What I had originally hoped for from the story was that they were going to have a bit of a deeper focus on Laura's mental recovery from the trauma of Yamatai. I mean, the original trailer for Rise actually showed this as she was in a therapy session talking about the events that happened, and I thought, wow, that would be an amazing perspective to have on this character, to have a Laura that is dealing with something like PTSD, but also still having this unwavering desire to continue to discover these amazing secrets that her father once told her about and that she just dismissed as fiction at one point. But now that she's been through Yamatai and seen this unexplainable event, she wants to know more. And while the game does, does tackle this a little bit, it doesn't do it nearly as strong as I thought it was going to. The therapy sessions are in the game, but... They're not the same ones shown in a trailer, and they're just audio logs that you obtain, but the game never really tells you that you obtain them, so you could very easily miss them. And they're nowhere near as emotionally strong as the ones shown in the trailer. The ones shown in the trailer felt legit, like they felt like Lara was damaged in a way, and that this was her recovering from that. This one just felt like mediocre, in a sense. It also doesn't help that when you're playing the Blood Ties DLC, it tells you the exact reason why Laura had to go to therapy. She didn't go because of the trauma she endured on Yamatai, no. She went because her uncle wouldn't allow her access to an, her parents' inheritance unless he felt that she was mentally stable. Like, really? <laughs> really? So yeah, in no way is the story in this game as strong as the previous one, and even some of the challenges and puzzles felt pretty dumbed down and in comparison to the last game but either way around it was a good story with some strong characters and it had a decent conclusion it left the door open for another tomb raider game which i'm excited about i'm excited to see what where they're going to go next plus the amount of side content and modes to play and collect will definitely keep you busy for a while after you beat the game if you decide you want to keep playing trust me there's a good number of modes for you to play and enjoy they are definitely there um plus you can also explore croft manor and the blood ties dlc uh, i wish it was a little bit more fleshed out though like it was in tomb raider 2 but i also did enjoy the little easter egg audio log where winston talks about laura tricking him and then locking him in the freezer <laughs> yeah that was a pretty nice nod in all though this game is a pretty decent sequel and it still leaves me excited for the next one so for my final score i give rise of the tomb raider a 7 out of 10 and as always, please remember that these are just the opinions of one dude on the internet with the powers of a PlayStation 4, a YouTube channel, and a passion for gaming. If you agree or disagree, please feel free to let me know down in the comments below and tell me why too. If you liked the video and want to leave a like, it would greatly be appreciated. And if you want to see more reviews or just want to join the team, the subscribe button will be down below for you as well. Thank you all for joining me and I will see you all in the next one. Mars out.